Hello Hamilton, it's that time again. Get up, get off the couch, and start tackling your own to-do list. I'm Bob Asadorian, welcome to another episode of the Just Ask Bob Show. Wow, on this show, we're tackling two emails. We'll jump right into it. First of all, uh, big thanks to Susan. Susan writes, Dear Bob, love your show. Uh, can you please do a show on window types and on how to install a window? I really want to do it myself along with my husband because we just do not have the money to pay a contractor. Well, Susan, thank you very much for the email. And yes, not only are we going to install a window on today's show, we're also going to demystify the process. We've got double hung windows, we've got casement window crank out, and we've also got a slider. And we're going to go through all the windows, we're going to teach you to give you the pros and cons, and install one. Okay, now we'll jump to Dave in Hamilton, Ontario. Dear Bob, I've heard that the city of Hamilton has a program in place. I believe it's the 3P program, Bob, that will pay for the cost of installing a sewer backflow preventer. Can you tell me all about the program? My basement is never flooded, Bob. However, I do wish to finish the basement one day, and it's just I just want to have this installed as a preventive measure. Well, Dave, thank you very much. Not a problem at all. We do have one on location, so we're going to take you there with the footage. But before that, uh, as with all shows, I'd like to show you a Bob's Beware, and I'd like to show you a Bob's Top Pick product. Let's stop with the Top Pick product. A lot of respect going out here to Moen. I've been using Moen for nearly 10 years, all of my plumbing products. This is the water saving toilet conversion kit. And as you know, on the marketplace, there's a great deal of toilets that come now with the, you know, the choice with the two buttons. Most times the control mechanism is on the tank lid. So you've got button A for three liters, button B for two liters, or something to that effect. This is a very nice unit. What really pleases me is you've got the five year warranty. And if you can read and you've got some simple hand tools, anybody can install this. So again, Hamilton, as I say on many, many shows, this show is not for contractors. This show is for Hamilton homeowners. Now, as I've said it many, many times on the show, this is about cutting the overcharging contractor out of the equation. This dual flush is not difficult to install. So my show needs to first motivate you. That's part of my beginning of each show, to get you pumped up, to get you interested. Secondly, it's to educate you. Install it yourself, save your money in the bank. Very important. Now, let's go to a Bob's Beware. Just as important as picking out top products that I recommend, I also believe it's equally as important to show you products that are just senseless, ridiculous, pieces of junk. Now, mind you, with an exception, this here is the Waterline Wax Bowl Ring. I have the highest of respect for Waterline. I use them all the time, but there's a bit of a catch here. This is a toilet wax gasket. Now, let me show you, let me explain it to you. Okay, this is maybe half inch thick and it's missing the horn. So this will mount to the bottom of your toilet and then you install your toilet. Now the same manufacturer, Waterline, they make one that is approximately twice as thick. Now when it comes to wax, size does matter. You want the thick one and also with the thick more expensive one, it has a horn on it. So coming out of here is a black plastic flange, which let's call it an assistance. It assists to make sure that your number two goes all the way down the drain. So that's very important. So again, not to disrespect Waterline because they make the thick one, the one that costs maybe six dollars, and then they also make the one that costs about a buck twenty-nine. So this is all about politics in the business world. Again, what's the difference? Four or five dollars? When you're cutting the contract out of the equation, you're saving a ton of money because a contractor is going to charge you anywhere from $80 to $120 to come install your toilet. So you're saving $80 to $120, reinvest the $4 and change in yourself and buy the thick wax seal. Very, very important. Quick shout out to the Home Depot, our continuing sponsor for season three. We're a great deal, if not all of these products are always available. Now, just before the quick break, I want to make, let you know that new for season three, brand new season also of a contest on our Facebook page. As you know, with past seasons, you submit on our Facebook page uh, what your to-do lists are and also why, why the jobs aren't getting done. We select somebody at the end and I show up to your home with a tool belt for you. 
not my seven-year-olds. So we show up in order to get you kick-started, get you motivated to start chipping away and tackling, tackling your own to-do list. Very easy to find, just type Just Ask Bob in the Facebook. Now we're gonna take a quick break, and after the break, we're going to be addressing Dave's question with regards to the uh, 3P program with the sewer backflow valves on location. Hello, Hamilton. We're on a construction site here, new home, residential, and we're showing a backflow valve that's already been installed. Now, just to give you some background, normally new home construction, you're never going to see a sewer backflow preventer valve. In this particular case, uh, going back the last few years, City of Hamilton has what they call a 3P program. I encourage every homeowner to jump on this. It's 546-2424. Ask for the backflow valve or the sewer department. They'll send you or they'll give you a ticket number. Then they'll mail you an application. You fill it out. This job is generally worth anywhere from two to $3,000. The city will pay most of it in order to have it installed. Now, let me open it up. I'll show you how it works. Okay. Now you don't see me too often throwing the gloves on, but in this case, yes, gloves are a must. We're obviously dealing with a sewer system. Now, again, you've got a picture, none of this was here. The home sewer line runs below the earth. This is a vertical tie-in, and it's got a rod and there's a flapper. The flapper is in usually in the closed position, so all of your sewage leaves your home and exits to the city side. When the backflow or when sewage wants to flow backwards into your home, it'll pick up the flap and lift it. So the flap will shut and it'll prevent your basement from experiencing a sewer, a sewer backup. Now I'll pull out the product so you can see it. That's the rod I was speaking of. A little bit of a wiggle, you pull it up. That's the flap. So again, this is, this is in the normally open position. So sewage will flow across and leave to the city. As it starts to back up, it'll lift, it'll shut itself. Now obviously, every few months you should look at it. Very easy to use, have the gloves on, pull it out, pull it into a pail, bring it into, bring it into your laundry room, clean it out, put it back. Now, as of 2013, this is standard, part of the Ontario Building Code. All new homes in Ontario will have this installed. So again, here's the problem with, with Building Code. This is worth about $200 in materials. To have the builders install this when the home's being built would cost nothing. After the fact, as in this one, you're looking at two to $3,000 to have it installed, but it's well worth the cost. Nothing is 100%, nothing's uh, foolproof, but it's a very good starting point if you don't want to experience a sewer backup and have a mess in your basement. So everything's sealed properly. Again, 905-546-2424. Call the city of Hamilton, ask about the 3P program, because again, this runs out of money time to time, and then a council, they top up the funding, because it's very important that you don't pay for it and you get it installed. We're taking a quick break, follow us after the break, and we'll be installing a window. Hello Hamilton, welcome back to the Just Ask Bob show. On today's show, we're taking more than one email. Uh, just before the break, we read you some questions here, one of which from Susan, Dundas, Ontario. Dear Bob, can you show me uh, the various window types on your show and also teach us how to install a window as my husband and I just don't have the money to pay for the contractor. All right, Susan, we'll do the best we can here. First of all, let's demystify the process. But first, big high five to Ryan. Hey, Bob, thanks for having Hopefully, me back. Hopefully uh, all our Hamilton viewers remember Ryan from season two, Triple R's foreman. He's going to give us a hand with the windows. Let's start talking about this one here. Now, this is a single hung window. But again, this is just for television purposes. Please, when you're buying a window, spend the extra $50. Buy it double hung. You'll find out why shortly. So the, the, this window is interesting now because it's got the feature where you can tilt it in to clean the glass. Let's watch here. You're right, and I'll hold it firmly. Yeah, okay. So you can operate it because it's hard when it's not installed in anything. You're going to want to start by just unlocking it, sliding it up as if you were just opening your window, and then to clean it, you just click these two tabs at the top, lower it, and wipe away. Now this is just beautiful. You clean it, you flip it back up. Now hold on, before we close it again, now again the reason why it's called single hung, you can only do that to the bottom. The top's fixed. 
So here's the, the ridiculousness about it. You've got this window on the second story of your home. You've now flipped it downward, you've cleaned it, you put it back. How do you clean this side? You've still gotta go up on a ladder to do it. So it makes more sense to spend the extra $50 or so, make certain, buy it double hung. That way also, another interesting part, watch, let's close it up, Ryan. Okay, another interesting part, crank it up about halfway. Halfway? What I love to do when it's a double hung, raise it half this way, drop the other part halfway. So you'll get heat rises, you get the heat in the home escaping, and you get your nice draft come in through the bottom. And one final thing with these windows, well two more things, obviously as you can see the locks in the center, depending on where you live, crime rate, what not, just, what not, just depends. You might want to invest an extra $20 in getting two locks. You'll have a lock on the far right, a lock on the far left. Keep the burglars out. Exactly. Okay, let's jump to number two here. Number two is pretty simple. Uh, it's, a, it's a slider. Now, if we look at quality-wise also, this is usually your worst seal or the bottom level quality-wise because of the way that it seals. It's just a slider. Let's give it a little slide there, Ryan, see how yep. it shows. There we go. Okay. Slides. There's not much your to average. these ones. However, you can order the slider so the glass tilts out so you can clean the glass without having to run outside your home. These are most common on basements. All basement windows will be sliders. And, well, again, I've seen it though, three, even $400,000 homes, depending on the builder. I've seen builders make every window in the home a slider, which is bad. That's not good at all. Now, your second highest quality level of a weather-tight seal is your single or double hung. Now, let me move around to the best. This is the Cadillac. This window is what's considered a casement or otherwise called a crank out. Now, I'll operate the window for you and I'll show you exactly why it's a good seal. So it's got the lock which pulls it in. You want to release the lock and then you can crank it out. So because of the nature of the window, as it starts to shut, you can crank it really tight and then when you put the lock on, it seals it really tight. This will give you your best efficiency. So there you go with how it shuts and then when you pull the lock it seals really well and again with this window you've got one lock as opposed to two. There's always the option, the upgrade to get two locks. Now like with any windows you really want to research the manufacturer, maybe get some reviews, go online. As far as options with these windows, uh, especially with these ones here, you can get uh, half screen or you can get full screen. You can also get the windows with argon gas or a low E film. So it's very important because it's going to cost you no matter what, then there's your time and your labor. So I always like to tell homeowners, get the most expensive, highest quality window you can afford, especially if you're saving the labor from not hiring a contractor and you're putting it in yourself. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We've got our prop, we've been working very hard over the off months to get everything ready for season three. As you can see, you know, use your imagination. This can be the outside of your home, first story, second story, preferably first story, so we're working under the height here. Now the window we're going to install today is going to be the slider. Let me bring it over. And then Ryan, you can grab the back there. Now let me just take a moment to explain to people, it's very important that this is level, you know, you're square and you're, and you're, you're properly framed. Now, again, this is new construction because we've made the prop, but under your circumstances, this may not be level, this may not be true and square or plumb, and you're gonna compensate with the shimming. So the first thing is to do a dry fit. Now, Ryan, let's pop the window out, uh, the screen out. Screen out. It's always important to get the screen out. You don't want to get spray foam on it. You don't want to get it mucked up. Nope. Okay, we'll set that aside. Now, some of the tools that we'll be using, tape measure, one for Ryan, yep, thank you. one for me. Knife to cut the shims. You want a sharp blade. I need a hammer. And it's nice to have a good quality level. Now when you're special ordering your windows, 
you want to generally leave about a half inch space all around the four sides. That's very important because you want to have space to be able to shim it if your opening's not true or square. And you also want to be able to have space for your spray foam. Now never do you fasten a window through the top and you don't fasten through the bottom. You only fasten through the right and left jam. So we'll start off with the shims here. First of all, we're going to check for level. Now you can see the bubble never lies. The left has to go up just a tad. So let's see. Let's set that in there. And I've done this enough times. I should be good at it. I would say not even one shim part way. Okay. There we go. Like I said, the level doesn't lie. Okay, we're set up there now. Now for the left and right. Should be a little bit of a gap there. Now the left and right, it helps to have two people. Get you a shim, Ryan. Let's start over here. Okay, now we gotta even out the gap so we don't wanna pull too much. How's we're the other side up. looking? We can come this way more. Okay. So let's, do you wanna shim in here more? Yeah, let's try the other side. Yep. Now, as you do this, you want to check for plumb. Okay, let's keep shimming. Yep. Okay, let's check the other side. There you go. Helps to have somebody inside the house, somebody outside the house. Nice and tight. Okay, it seems that way. Now we gotta check for plumb. Bang out towards me, Ryan, just a little. Yeah. Okay. Bottom or top? Uh, really bang push out. the bottom out a bit. Bottom? Yeah. Okay. Right there. Now, let's take a moment to talk about the reveal. Now, this depends. Do you have brick on the outside of your home? Do you have vinyl siding? It depends. You can also order these windows with a flange. The flange will go around. It's, it's called the nailing flange. So for all intents and purposes, the amount that you protrude on the outside will have a lot to do with what your outside finish is. If it's brick, if it's stucco, if it's siding. But no matter what, you want to make sure that you're plumb. Now let's take the bottom in a bit. Into me? Yeah, into you a little bit. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, back out again. Okay. Let's kick out the bottom a bit. Nice. Okay. okay. Do we want to check the bottom for level again? Yeah, let's Just check it again because this guy could have slid. With it, yeah. Nice, we're level. Let's check out the other side for plumb. Bottom out a little bit. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, nice. Now let's throw some screws in there. Alrighty. Got so you're gonna, yeah, you're gonna secure the window. Screws. Using two and a half inch screws, two and a half or three inch screws. You wanna get a good deal of penetration. Now most homes should have double studs to the left and right. If you don't, you should add the studding if you can. But again, another way to consider this, if you're building a shed or if you're building something in general, uh, creating new construction from scratch, you wanna make sure that you've got double studs at the left and right. That way you're gonna get some really good fastening. So here you go, Ryan, Thanks, there's Bobby. some screws. I'll hold it in place for you. Okay. That's two. Ah. All right, three. Okay, and the other side? other side? Yep. Yeah. Let's open the window. Okay. 
Okay. Now only one at the top and then I'll show you why. Okay. Okay, now hold on. Now the other side, you put one in the middle, right? You did. You want pull me to take it out? it out? Yeah, pull it out. As you can see, we've got shims at the top, shims at the bottom. You don't want to have a screw through the middle unless there's a shim there. Now on this window, for the size of it, you only need to fasten the top and bottom. If it was a much taller window, you would also fasten through the middle, but with a shim. And Ryan, of course, I'm always learning, always <laughs> learning. Ryan knows that, but again, it's different. We put hundreds of these in a year, but again, much different when we got the camera on us, but no worries. For those of you at home, we've taught you a lesson. If you really want to put one through in the middle, so you've got to realize now, we've got an empty space here. So let me show you, I don't know if I'm strong enough here, but if I grab that and pull, see how I'm bowing it? That's bowing the jam. So when you've got the shims put in tight, you're not going to bow the jam. Speaking of bowing the jam, let me give you a big example of that now with the spray foam. Okay, this spray foam, uh, window and door, seals and insulates without bowing. This is low expansion. Believe me, you'll have issues, big issues if you use the wrong spray foam. This spray foam will expand forward and back. It's weak, it's limp, so to speak. It's not strong enough to bow or damage the jam. Now, these ones are. You don't want to use big gap filler, and you most certainly don't want to either use the regular one. These are strong. These, in most cases, they will. They'll distort your jam. So once you bow the jam, your window's not going to operate properly. So now, before we apply the spray foam, Ryan, let's test the window. Yep. Close it, lock it, make sure it freely operates. Works. Because this is your last chance after Perfect. you spray foam it, it's not coming out. Okay? Beauty. Now actually, this will be interesting. I'll apply on this end, so you can see the penetration flow backwards. Ryan will apply on the other end, so your viewers at home can see the spray foam coming this way. One thing, always wear gloves when you're using this stuff. Bob's not sensitive, Bob's not no sensitive. gloves for me. Unless I'm working on a sewer system. Now it's messy stuff, you don't want to get it on your fingers. Now as you can see, I stayed about three quarters of an inch uh, inside because the stuff will expand. Ryan, give it a shot on the other side. Yep. Okay, let me hit the bottom. Yep. Now the bottom, if you remember, I don't know if it's the slope of the shop floor here, the way we framed it, but it's pretty well tight here, and then it starts to gap. So here's where we shimmed it up in order to get level here. So again, you still definitely want to spray foam. I know it's not much, but everything helps. Now we're almost there. What we're going to do now is cut off the shims. Ideally, you want to do this after your spray foam is dry, but not a big deal. We can get those off for you. So you see, you're going to cut your shims off nicely all the way around. Now, you have a couple of choices here about a vapor barrier. At the very, very least, phenomenal product. I highly recommend it. Tuck tape. You want to get the tuck tape and you want to make a complete seal here. Now if you really want to go high end and money doesn't matter, remember you've saved a lot. You haven't hired a contractor. This is blue skin. This product is just phenomenal. So you're going to cut blue skin, you're going to tape it into here, tape it across and then your vinyl siding or your Tyvek house wrap or whatever would be addressed under new construction. If this is um, existing, you're going to have to have aluminum capping or trim put on the, the, uh, put on the four sides. Thank you to Ryan. Thanks Bobby. Thanks good, for having me. Good job. Thank you Hamilton for watching. Now remember, not just this, we've got a full 20 shows from season two and season one. Fast forward, pause, rewind, 
Take it at your own pace. Triple W, justaskbob.com. See you next time. Thank you, Hamilton.